Hello children and welcome back. Our lesson for today is Sent Forth on a Mission. In the last two lessons, we learnt about the journey on the road to Emmaus. This journey can be divided into three parts. The first part is when the disciples meet Jesus. Jesus explains the scripture to them on this journey. But the disciples had not recognized him. We can compare this part of the journey to the first part of the Mass, the liturgy of the word. Now the second part is when the disciples invite Jesus to stay with them and have a meal with them. This can be compared to the second part of the Mass, the liturgy of the Eucharist. The disciples were so happy that Jesus stayed with them and broke bread with them. They were very excited that Jesus had rose from the dead. They wanted to tell this news to the others. So they returned to Jerusalem to spread this good news. We will see in today's lesson how the Mass sends every Christian on a mission. We can compare this part of the Mass to the third part of the journey where the disciples return to Jerusalem to give the good news to the others. Now, let us listen to a story. It is a true story which happened in one of the parish in Mumbai. The first Holy Communion children decided to visit the home for the destitute. A home for the destitute is a home where children are kept who have no mummy, no daddy and no home to live. So here is the story. The first communion teacher in a parish was telling the class the story of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. After the story, the teacher suggested that one Sunday morning they would visit a home for destitute children run by the missionaries of charity, that is, Mother Teresa's nuns. The children were quite excited about the trip. They started preparing for it. They began gathering toys, clothes and some eatables to be offered to those children. They started practicing a small skit for them to watch. When the final day came, the children were very happy to bring joy to the children in their home. They were warmly welcomed by those children. They were joined by their parents too. They spent an hour playing with those children. Most of the children were happy to sit by the bedside of those children who could not walk because they were sick and others who were very small. Everyone enjoyed the skit. When they all returned back to the parish, the teacher was very surprised to hear from the first communicants that they wanted to make such visits more often. They thought they could make it once every two months. As the day of their first Holy Communion was approaching, there was a common feeling in the heart of all the First Communion children and their parents that they wanted to share their beautiful day with those children. So, 
they decided to arrange a visit to the home even on their first communion day. The teachers as well as the parish priest was not surprised at this wise decision. Since then, this has become a well-loved custom in this parish. Now, here are a few questions that we may reflect on. How do you like the children's plan to visit a home for destitute children every two months? Do you see any difficulties arising? How do you like the plan of fixing a visit to the home even on First Communion Day? How does this compare with your plans for the big day? Now, let us try to understand the power that the Eucharist gives us to serve one another by looking at the last part of the Emmaus story. Now take a look at this video. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to a village called Emmaus and talking about everything that had happened with Jesus. As they were talking, Jesus suddenly came and walked with them. Oh, hello. But God kept them from recognizing Jesus. Jesus asked them what they were talking about. The two men were very sad. One of them, whose name was Cleopas, said, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there in the last few days. Uh. Jesus asked, What things? The men replied, The things that happened to Jesus. And they began to tell Jesus about everything that had happened to him. They told him that some women had gone to his tomb and said that his body was missing and that others had gone to see if it was true and saw that his body really was gone. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people! You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Uh, let me explain. Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus. Jesus acted as if he was continuing on. Hey, wait! But the men begged him to stay the night with them because it was getting late. Come with us! Oh, okay. So Jesus went home with them, and as they sat down to eat, Jesus blessed the bread. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. It's you! And at that moment, he disappeared. Where'd he go? The men said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he explained the scriptures to us? Come on! And that hour, they made their way back to Jerusalem. They found the 11 and the others who were with them and told them their story. As they were telling their story, Jesus was suddenly standing among them. Well, that's all what happened. Yep. Ah! Everyone was frightened and thought he was a ghost. Okay, come on, guys. But Jesus showed that it was really him. He showed them his hands and feet, and they all watched him in awe. Then Jesus asked for something to eat. Oh, got anything to eat? And they gave him fish to eat. Oh, that's good. Jesus reminded them that everything happened as it was supposed to and helped them understand the scriptures. Then he promised to send them the Holy Spirit and told them to stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit would come and fill them with the power from heaven. We have seen in the story that the disciples were joined by the stranger who first explained to them the scriptures and then broke bread with them. That's when they recognized him as the risen Lord. The disciples were so touched by this discovery that they could not keep this experience to themselves. So 
they got up at once and went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others. The two then explained to the others what had happened on the road and how they had recognized the Lord when he broke the bread. While the two were telling them this, suddenly the Lord himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. We need to understand here that their return to Jerusalem was really a response from the heart. They were so excited that they had seen the risen Jesus that they could not keep this good news to themselves. They wanted to go and tell others that he is alive and that if we all live by the words that he had spoken before his death, we too would be able to see him with our inner eyes. At the Last Supper, Jesus had shown his disciples how much he wanted the Eucharistic meal to be one of fellowship and service. At that same meal, where he commanded his disciples to break bread and share a cup in his name, he had washed his disciples' feet and commanded them to do likewise. After his death and resurrection, every time he appeared to his disciples, he assured them that he would send his Holy Spirit to be with them and encourage them. Fifty days after he rose, the Holy Spirit indeed descended on the apostles at Pentecost in the form of a strong wind and tongues of fire. From then on, the disciples were convinced that Jesus wanted them to continue to meet to break bread in his name and find courage to go out in his name to love and serve one another. This truly is the effect of every Eucharist that we celebrate today. It fills us with a kind of desire to go out in service in the name of the risen Lord Jesus. Do you remember the concluding rite of the Mass? What does the priest say after the last blessing? The priest says to all those present, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. The priest sends us forth as faithful servants to build up God's kingdom. He sends us to spread the love we have received at the Lord's table. Just as the disciples hurried back to share the good news, we too are called to share the good news that God loves us, that he has given us Jesus who lives in us through his spirit. Our response Thanks be to God is an expression of joy. We have received the gift of Jesus in the Eucharist and now we want to share that gift by serving Jesus in others. We are eager to build God's kingdom of love. We proclaim the good news by telling people about Jesus. We proclaim the good news by living good lives. We proclaim the good news by reaching out to the poor 
and needy just like Jesus did. We proclaim the good news by living joyful lives, by living in love and harmony with others. We proclaim the good news by using our gifts to serve others, just as the first communion children in our first story had done. So dear children, every time we take part in the Eucharistic celebration, let us not just rush through the final response, thanks be to God. We need to be more conscious of being prepared to love and serve like Jesus. You may be thinking that only fathers, sisters and brothers are called to spread the good news about Jesus. In a way, you are right because that is what you have seen and you are told. But let us remember that every baptized Christian has a mission. This means that if you are a member of a church by baptism, you have a mission of spreading the good news. This membership is made stronger when you receive First Holy Communion and therefore your mission gets even more important. Simply living in the life that Jesus Christ wants us to live is a powerful witness to those around us and makes us missionaries in the modern world. It is the greatest privilege that God has entrusted to us to carry on the work that Jesus Christ came to this earth. God could have chosen a more efficient method of spreading the good news rather than entrusting to us. He could have chosen the angels to proclaim the good news and it would have been done much more quickly. But the fact is, he has chosen us to proclaim the good news. Now, let us prepare our hearts to listen to the word of God. Children, gently close your eyes and sit still for a while. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Now gently open your eyes and follow the reading on your screen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 44 to 47. All the believers continued together in close fellowship and shared their belongings with one another. They would sell their property and possessions and distribute the money among all, according to what each one needed. Day after day, they met as a group in the temple and they had their meals together in their homes, eating with glad and humble hearts praising God and enjoying the good will of all the people. And every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The life of the first Christian community was a perfect life of sharing where everybody shared with others whatever they had and nobody personally and privately owned anything. 
That is the real spirit of sharing. This is the spirit we see in great saints like Mother Teresa of Kolkata who lived the Eucharist in her life by completely sharing her whole life with the destitute, orphans and lepers. She had tremendous devotion to the Blessed Sacrament and that is why one of her missionaries of charity says, Mother received Holy Communion with tremendous devotion. When you receive Holy Communion with devotion like Mother Teresa, you will also be filled with the spirit of loving and sharing like her and the first Christians. Then your life too will indeed become a true Eucharistic life. The Holy Communion is a strong invitation and inspiration to lead such a life. Let us reflect on our own behavior. Are we like the early Christians who love and serve others? What do we need to do to carry on Christ's mission? Let us ask Jesus, whom we will be receiving in Holy Communion for the first time very soon, for the grace to continue his mission. Now children, let us say this prayer together. We thank you, Lord, for choosing us to spread the good news. Give us your strength and wisdom every day, guiding us towards the way we should go. Give us patience and a joyful heart. Let us be an example of your love and forgiveness. May we be kind and generous to others. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Children, now let's join in and sing together. Last lesson for this year. 
we are at the end of our preparation for the first Holy Communion. This year has been very different for you and for us. When we began this journey, we did not know what lay ahead of us. But trusting in the Lord, we moved ahead one step at a time. And here we are at the end of a successful preparation. So children, very soon you will be receiving Jesus. Our prayer for you is that may Jesus who comes into your heart be with you, bless you and guide you always. Our assignment for today's lesson is to write a simple heart-to-heart -heart letter to Jesus, inviting him into your heart and your lives. That's all children. Take care. God bless you.